There are a lot of ideas about Christianity that have taken on really twisted meanings since they were first introduced. So we want to reclaim some of those instead of just letting the bad guys win all the time. Hey, I'm Pastor Chad from Westside Presbyterian Church in Fort Worth, Texas, and I want to talk to you about reclaiming confession. Most of the time when people hear confession, they think that somebody has done something mildly or majorly wrong and that God is so mad God's going to send them to hell unless they admit what they did to God or a priest or someone else, beg for forgiveness, and then they can go to heaven again. And that's partially true, not the go to hell and go to heaven part, but the book of James says if we confess our sins to one another and pray for one another, then we might be healed. First John says, if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So there does seem to be something to confessing or naming our sins and forgiveness and healing. But sins isn't the only thing that we can confess. Even those things that the Bible calls sin doesn't mean that you're condemned to hell. Rather, the scripture is encouraging us to name those things that we struggle with, to share them and to find help beyond ourselves for the things in our lives that we can't deal with on our own. One of the coolest things about being human is our ability to speak. Speech is that relief that comes from being able to put words to something that we think or feel, and it gives us the ability to think differently and interact differently with those things. Giving something a name or confessing it makes it real and makes it something that can be shared or brought into the light, takes it out of the shadows, out of the fearful places where they can be dealt with where those dragons can be slain. So confess, right? Talk to your friends. Tell them what's up. Tell them what's really going on in your heart. And maybe you can find some healing.